Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel and we're going to continue with our retro replay of the 1967 World Series using Dice Baseball from 14 Gen Gaming. And it's what if Tony Caligniero and Sparky Lyle played? Well, so far the what if has not gone too well. In reality, the Red Sox would split the first two games with the Cardinals. In our retro replay, they are down two games to none. <laughs> so, as we travel to St. Louis in our time machine, and let's see if the Red Sox can right the ship and pull back in this series. The date is October 7th, 1967. We're at Bush Stadium, 54,575 fans here to witness the Cardinals try to take a 3-0 lead. Now, in reality, the Cardinals would win 5-2 behind the pitching of Nelson Bryles. Gary Ding Dong Bell would take the loss for the Red Sox. Well, we got to reverse that. I've also noticed in this game... And I do like this game, uh, Dice Baseball, from uh, 1400, uh, Gen 1400. Um, in the 60s, 50s, even the early 70s, a lot uh, there are certain relievers who would start games. And Nelson Bryles had 14 starts and 35 relief appearances. But this game seems to take an average of all that. And his stamina is only good for 13. Now, I'm not going to adjust that because when Jose Santiago pitched game one, the same thing. He was only good for 12 batters. Moving forward when we play these series, I'm going to adjust that a bit because uh, they were better. Uh, their control factors would be better than that. So, anyway, just an FYI. Let's get to the starting lineups and play some dice baseball. Johnny B. Crazy's in the chat. Thank you for stopping by, my friend. Check out that wonderful channel, Johnny B. Crazy. Um, good fun time as they talk Game of Thrones, Westworld, all kinds of things. And he also has Cylons John with himself and John St. Batiste, where they talk about uh, Battlestar Galactica, the newer version. Not the one with Lauren Green. A little disappointed in that, but more good times. All right, let's get to the starting lineup. And again... The original starting lineup for the Boston Red Sox was Jose Tartable in right, Dalton Jones at third, Yastrzemski in left, Scott at uh, first, batting fourth, Reggie Smith in center, batting fifth, Jerry Adair batting sixth, playing second base, Rico Petroselli batting seventh, the shortstop, Elston Howard doing the catching, batting eighth, and the pitcher, Gary Ding Dong Bell, batting ninth. However, we have Tony Caligniero in the game, so we've switched it up. As he is playing right field instead of Jose Tartable. So we're going with Jerry, or D Jerry Adair batting first, playing second base. Dalton Jones batting second at third base. Batting third, triple crown winner and MVP of the American League, Carl Yastrzemski in left. Tony Caligniero is in right, batting fourth. George the Boomer Scott batting fifth, playing first base. Reggie Smith is in center, batting sixth. And he is a switch hitter. Batting 7th, playing shortstop Rico Petroselli. Batting 8th, doing the catching is Elston Howard. And on the mound, batting ninth, Gary Ding Dong Bell, who they acquired from the Cleveland Indians early in the 67th season. For the St. Louis Cardinals, leading off, playing left field, Lou Brock. He's been outstanding the first two games. At the plate and in the field. Batting second, the center fielder, Kurt Flood. Batting third, he homered in game two. Roger Maris playing right field. Batting fourth, the National League MVP playing first base. Orlando Cepeda, the baby bull. Batting fifth, doing the catching, Tim McCarver. He also homered in game two. Mike Shannon plays third, bats six. Julian Javier bats seventh, plays second base. And batting eighth, and he also homered in game two off Jim Lombard. Playing shortstop, Dahl Maxville. Batting ninth, the pitcher, Nelson Bryles. So here we go, folks. 
Game number three. Cardinals looking to take a commanding 3-0 lead. Nelson Bryles on the mound. And in 1967, Nelson Bryles had a record of 14-5. He did have, as I stated earlier, uh, 14 starts, but he had 35 relief appearances. His ERA was 2.43. Control factor 10 through 67. He came in to throw an inning in game two with the off day. And the manager, Red Shane Dean, went with a hunch and went with Bryles. The Cardinals in 67 finished uh, with 101 wins, 60 losses, and they won the National League pennant. The Red Sox came down to the last day of the 67 season. And they won the American League pennant with a 92-70 and 70 record. Dick Williams is the Red Sox manager. Red, Red Shane Dean is the Cardinals manager. All righty. So here comes Nelson Bryles. He's on the mound. Picks up the sign from Tim McCarver. Here's the first pitch of the ball game to Jerry Adair. And that is a 69. And that's just outside of Nelson Bryles' control factor. That is, his control is 10 through 67. So we're going to go off the Jerry Adair card. Can the Red Sox get things going early? And that's a 40. And they shall not. That is a swing and a miss for Jerry Adair as he catches nothing but air. So that's strikeout and out number one. Here comes Dalton Jones. He's had a few hits. In the first two games, he's also booted the ball twice at third. Here's the pitch to the left-hand batting third baseman, Dalton Jones. And Nelson Bryles deals Jones a 56. So Bryles is in control off of his card. And off a of lefty to advance safely to first base, 0 through 22. And it's a 29. And you know what that is? Swing and a miss, strike three. So Bryles, two up, two down via the K. And here comes Carly Ostremski, MVP, Triple Crown winner for the Boston Red Sox. Digs in that left-hander's batter's box. He awaits the Bryles offering. Here's the pitch, and that is a 0-2. We go to the special events chart. We all love the special events chart, don't we? And that is a 93. And a 93. And, of course, it's a special result chart. So let's go to the handy-dandy special result chart. They have actually some good ones on here. And as long as it's not like player kills umpire, we're going to go with it. So here we go. Special events chart 55. Let's see what 55 is. Pitcher caught doctoring the ball. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Pitcher gets thrown out. Yeah, we're not doing that. I was hoping it like a brawl or something. But all right, we're just going to play this out as a fielding range. So let's see who the fielder will be. And that's a 77. I mean, that's fine if you're playing a, a, a regular game. So 77 is for the center fielder, Kurt Flood. And Kurt Flood is a fine defender. Kurt Flood's defense is a 90 uh, range, actually. I'm sorry, range check is a 94. He covers a lot of ground. So two outs, no one on, and that is a 19. A 19 on a 94. And Flood makes the running catch towards the gap. Side is retired. So Yastrzemski, bid for extra bases, goes for not. Excellent running catch by Kurt Flood to right center. Side is retired as Bryles sends them down one, two, three. So now Gary Ding Dong Bell strides to the plate, uh, to the mound, excuse me. And he's going to face Brock, Flood, and Maris. All hopes hinge on Gary Ding Dong Bell, the pitcher they picked up from Cleveland. His control factor is 10 through 55. Stamina is 24 batters before fatigue sets in. Lou Brock has had quite a game. Series, actually, excuse me. He First two games, he's been outstanding. Homered, tripled, he's done it all. Here's the pitch to the dangerous Lou Brock, and that's an 85. Right off the bat, we go off the Brock card, and that is a 42. 
to Lou Brock and a 42 is Brock has done it again. He's homer to lead off the game as Gary Bell is a righty and a home run against a right-handed pitcher for Brock is 41 to 44 and say no more. Bye-bye birdie like a beautiful balloon. The ball lifts out of Bush Stadium to the cheers of the Cardinals fans and it's once again one nothing St. Louis. A home run. Brock's second home run of the series, second leadoff home run of the series, and it's one nothing cards. Things not looking good for Gary Ding Dong Bell and the Red Sox. Here comes Kirk Flood. Bell disgusted with himself. Howard goes out to have a quick word with his pitcher. Now back behind the plate. Pounds the mitt, sets the target. Here's the pitch to Flood. And that is an 83 again. Bell cannot hit his spot. We'll go off the Flood card. And he reaches safely 0 through 45. And it's a 52. That's a ground ball in front of the plate. Quickly picked up by Elston Howard. So Howard's defense, as we have to roll for an error check, Elston Howard's defense is a 98th fabulous catcher picked up from the Yankees on waivers. And that's a 76. No error. Howard's throw is true. And that's out number one, as that goes Howard to the Boomer George Scott. So one out, one nothing, thanks to the Lou Brock leadoff homer. Here comes Roger Maris. He homered off Jim Lomborg in game two. Left-handed batter. Bell nods his head, the wind-up and the pitch to Maris, and that's a 51. That's in Bell's control factor range. We go off the Gary Ding Dong Bell card. And that's a 66. And Roger Maris will get no kicks on Route 66. As that is a line shot to the second baseman. And Jerry Adair makes the catch. So there's two down. Now bring up the National League MVP, the baby bull, Orlando Cepeda. Bell rocks and fires to Cepeda. And that's a 95 Again, Gary Ding Don Bell, very erratic. We go off the Cepeda card. He reaches safely against right-handed pitching. 0 through 45, and it's a 41! And that ball is off the green monster. Retrieved by Yastrzemski. And Cepeda goes into second with a two-out double. So Tim McCarver strides the plate. Oh, error check. No error. Okay. As Yastrzemski fields it and throws it back into the cutoff man, Rico Petroselli. So two outs, runner in scoring position for Tim McCarver, left-handed batter. Elston Howard wiggles the fingers. Here's the pitch to McCarver, and that's a 41. We go off the bell card. Lefties reach safely 0 through 22, and that's a 76. The inning will be over. As that ball goes up in the air, 76. Go to the fielding chart. And 70. Oh, this is the number that they actually don't have on the chart. This is hilarious. The one number they forgot, 76. So we're going to say that's a fly ball to Yastrzemski in left, and he makes the catch. I remember this now when I was playing offline. They don't have 76 on the chart. That's pretty funny. So he flies out to Yastrzemski, and all in all, the Red Sox only give up one run. They'll take it. They've usually given up a couple of runs in the first. So we go to the top of the second, one nothing Cardinals, as Gary Ding Dong Bell faced one, two, three, four, five batters. So that reduces his fatigue. Five to nineteen. Due up for the Red Sox. Tony Caligniera, George the Boomer Scott, and Reggie Smith. Let's go to the chat. In the chat we have John St. Batiste. Check out that great channel. Lots of fun. Fun stuff on there. He had a different look, John St. Batiste, in his last video. It threw me for a loop, but we love John St. Batiste. We don't care 
what he looks like. And might I say, John and John, Johnny B. Crazy and John St. Batiste are two handsome-looking gentlemen. And I am fine with my masculinity to say that. And Max Cornelius has joined us. How are you, my friend, Max? Hope all is well with everyone. What's going on with your channel? All right, here comes Tony C. He digs in. Can Caligniero tie it up with one swing of the bat? Here's the pitch from Bryles to Tony Caligniero. It's a 93. We go off the Tony C card. Righty, righty matchup. Caligniero reaches safely 0 through 44. And it is a 31. And Tony Caligniero singles to right. As he turns on that fastball, Maris retrieves it, throws it back in towards the cutoff, man. So Caligniero is on at first. A leadoff single in the top of the second. Now bring up George the Boomer Scott. He has struggled in the first two games. Bryles picks up the sign. McCarver sets a target. Here's the pitch to the Boomer, and that is a 46. Bryles is in control. 46. Again, he's pure death on righties. 0 through 18. And it is a 9. And that is a single right through the wickets of Nelson Bryles. And station to station go the Red Sox. They got something going here. Caligniero's on at second. The Boomer picks up his first hit of the series. He's on at first. And I'll bring up Reggie Smith, the switch hitting center fielder. Very young team, the Red Sox in 67. Max Cornelius says he's doing all right. Asks how everyone else is doing. Well, I'm doing fine. Thank you, sir. McCarver wiggles the fingers. The wind up and the pitch to Reggie Smith batting lefty. And that is a 63. Bryles in control. And that's a 0-2. And Reggie Smith works a walk. This is the biggest threat the Red Sox have had in the first three games of this series. They trail two games to none. Bases are juiced. No outs. Caligniero at third. Scott at second. And Reggie Smith at first. And here comes Rico Petroselli. Petroselli had three hits in game one off Bob Gibson. Bryles. A little shook up on that mound. McCarver goes out to have a word with his catcher. Cepeda meets him on the mound. Meeting adjourned, players back to their position. Bryles takes a deep breath. Arms down to his chest. The windup and the pitch to Petroselli. And that is a 31 off the Bryles card. Righty, righty matchup. So 0 through 18. Petroselli reaches safely. And he shall not reach safely. As the infield's playing for two with a 1 0 lead. That is a 68. A 68. Where's my pen? Ah, oh, there's my pen. A 68 off the Bryles card. Righty, righty. That is a line shot to the second baseman, Julian Javier. And unlike in game two, he makes the catch. He does not commit an error. So that's a line out. Let's see if anyone gets doubled up on that. God, I hope not. It would just be the Red Sox luck that that would happen. I don't think anyone gets doubled up on that. Bases loaded. Line out to fielder. Runners hold. That's what I thought. So one down as Petroselli hit it hard. But right at Julian Javier, the Cardinals second baseman. Here comes Elston Howard, the weak hitting catcher who the Red Sox picked up on waivers from the Yankees in 67. Still an excellent defensive catcher. Shell of himself offensively, though he did it 303 against left handed batting, uh, pitching. But Bryles is a righty on deck is the pitcher Gary Ding Dong Bell. So Bryles could get out of this mess. Here's the pitch to Howard, no place to put Elston, and that is a 0 6 special result chart. And we'll just roll at the 66 fielders range. And, ooh, a spinner, and that's an 81. And an 81 is out to Kurt Flood in center. So Howard 
Hits this ball to the gap, it looks like. But will it be deep enough to score a run? And again, Kurt Flood, an outstanding defender. Great defense, great range. And Flood's range is a 94. We've already had a range check here. And that is a 75. That could be trouble. 94 and a 75. That is a running catch. But not deep enough as it was to the gap. But shallow. So Flood makes the catch quickly, fires the ball back in, and all runners hold. So the Red Sox are in danger of squandering bases loaded, no outs. Now it's bases loaded, two outs. Nice catch by Kurt Flood. And here comes Gary Ding Dong Bell to try to help his own cause. Two outs and no place to put Ding Dong. As D. Scott Howard has joined us. How are you, my friend? Hope all is well. We will be using a pitcher's card, pitcher's hitter's card. And if it lands on the pitcher's hitter's card, 0 through 20. Bryles deals to his counterpart, Gary Ding Dong Bell, and that's a 38. And Bell is a righty. 0 through 18 we need. And it's an 8! It is an 8! Gary Bell singles to left! And we have a tie ball game. So Caligniero trots in from third. It's 1-1. Gary Ding Dong Bell comes through in the clutch. And George the Boomer Scott, right field, Maris. Maris. Maris's arm. Minus five. Two outs from second. There's no modification. Top of the order coming up. Scott's, yeah, we're going to minus five. So that'd be a 69. Scott's speed is a 74. Do we send him and try to take the lead? I think we must. We need to play aggressively, in my opinion. Let's go to the advancement chart. Runner going from second to home on any single. Two outs. Um, no modification subtraction. So they're waving Scott around. Here's the throw from Maris. And Scott slides in safe under the McCarver tag. We roll a 45. The Red Sox take their first lead of the series 2-1. to one. So Caligniero... And Scott both score on the two-out, two-RBI single by Gary Ding Dong Bell. Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith. Let's see if it says Reggie Smith holds at second. So two outs, two on, two to one Red Sox as they finally come through in a big way. And here comes the top of the order, Jerry Adair. And Adair struck out his first time against Bryles. Bryles' fatigue factor is going to be coming into play quite soon. As he has 10 batters he can face. And he's faced 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's down to 4 batters. Here's the pitch to Jerry Adair. And that's a 60. And that was a 3. That was a 3. So we go off the Nelson Bryles card. And that is a 15! Righty, righty, matchup 15. That's a single to right. Reggie Smith will be waved around as he's a 76 speed minus 5 because there's two outs, no modification factor. Can the Red Sox go up by 2? So it's a 71. We need a 71 or lower. And this time, Maris's throw is true. McCarver blocks the plate and applies the tag on Reggie Smith. Inning is over. 
But the Red Sox do score two, and they take the lead two to one. What a throw by Roger Maris. Great job by McCarver blocking the plate and planting that tag on Reggie Smith. So the Adair single does not produce fruit. As thrown out at the plate is Reggie Smith. As he is out 9 to 2. We go to the bottom of the second. Boston, 2-1. to one. First lead of the series for the Red Sox. And let's quickly do our pitcher modification for Bryles for the next inning. He faced 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he is down to three batters. And Gary Ding Dong Bell, the man who knocked in the two runs, goes back out to the bump. He is prepared to face... Mike Shannon, Julian Javier, and Dahl Maxville. Shannon, right-handed batting third baseman. Digs in. He awaits the bell offering. Here's the pitch to Shannon. And that is a 0-7. We go to the special events chart. Most likely a range play. That's basically what we're playing here, range plays. And it is a 21, so it'll be a range play. And that's an 85. And an 85 goes out to the Red Sox center fielder. Reggie Smith, who was thrown out at the plate, and Reggie Smith's range, and he does is 92. So 92. Will he get to the ball? 52. 92 range. And a 52. And he makes a fine running catch for out number one. As Shannon gave it a ride, but Smith tracks it down in center. So that's one out here in the bottom of the second. And here comes Julian Javier, second baseman. Here's the pitch to Javier. And that is a 10. We go off the Gary Ding Dong Bell card. And that's a 92. So that will be an out. Righty righty matchup. 92. Fly ball. Shallow right field going back as Adair. He calls off Caligniero. And the second baseman makes the catch in shallow right. So there's two down. And here comes Dahl Maxville. The Red Sox are down two games to none. They must win game three. A 3-0 lead against this great Cardinals team. And Bob Gibson going in game four is an insurmountable lead, in my opinion. Maxville homered off Lomborg and back in Fenway. The ball just went scraped over the left field wall in the green monster for a touch of all. Here's the pitch to Maxville. And that is a 60 so Gary Ding Dong Bell is not in control, misses his spot. Again, his control is 10 through 55. We go to the Maxville card. Righty, righty matchup. Maxville reaches safely 0 through 33. And he shall not reach safely. There will be an error check, though. That's an 82. And 82 is up in the air. Another ball hit up in the air off Gary Ding Dong Bell, 82. And Elston Howard throws off his mask. He's near the home home plate. He waits for the ball to come down. And he makes the catch. As that's a 46. No error on Howard. And 1, 2, 3, go the Cardinals. Great rebound inning for Gary Ding Dong Bell. We go to the top of the third. 2-1 to one Red Sox. Bryles. Can face three batters before fatigue sets in. This could be the Red Sox opportunity here. And Bryles will face Dalton Jones, Carly Ostremski, both lefties, and Tony Caligniero, who singled and scored. Dalton Jones struck out his first time up. Here's the pitch to the Red Sox third baseman. Bryles deals him an 11. So we go off the Bryles card. 0 through 22 for a lefty for success. There will be no success here. That is an 83. And an 83 is a pop-up near the pitcher's mound. Coming in is Javier. He calls off Maxville, the shortstop, and makes the catch. So one out. As Dalton Jones is now 0 for 2. Now bring up Carly Stremski. Hit a shot to right center field that Kurt Flood tracked down. Here's the pitch to Yaz from Bryles. And that is a 92. We go off the Ostremski card. Yaz 
against right-handed pitching. 0 through 53. And that is a 24. And that's a single to left. Yastrzemski goes the other way. So the Red Sox getting to Bryles. Bryles can face one more batter before fatigue sets in. And that batter is Tony Caligniero. He singled to start off the second and scored on the two-out single by Gary Bell, the pitcher who knocked in Caligniero and Scott. Here's the pitch to Tony C. What will it be? We shall see. And that is a 91. Wouldn't matter. So it goes off the Caligniero card. 0 through 44. It's a 40. Tony C. launches that ball. Dead center field. It's a two-run shot. Touch them all. Tony Caligniero. A two-run homer. The Red Sox go up 4-1. to one. As he is greeted at the plate by Carl Yastrzemski. And there's lots of joy and happiness in the Red Sox dugout. The Red Sox go up 4-1 to one on the Tony C. two-run blast at dead center. As he crushes that Nelson Bryles offering. Looked like a flat slider. And my mistake, because Al Red Sox fan got excited, he rolled, he read the wrong dice first. That is a walk. <laughs> I read the red die first, not the green die. I'm looking at it going, I made a mistake there. That was an excellent home run call, too. That sucks. Anyway, still 2-1 to one Red Sox. Caligniero walks, as that's a 0-4. Zero 0-4. Four. Zero four. Yeah, that's a walk. I looked at the... Wrong number first. I looked at the red die. I should look at the green die first. So that's a walk. No home run. My faux pas. Errors will happen. I'm not perfect, you know. So that is a walk. Is Stremski. Goes to second. No outs. And here comes George the Boomer Scott. Al, remember to look at the green die first. Don't get all excited. Phantomatics joined us in the chat. He put up a video. Of uh, History Maker Golf. I watched that. You got to do a skins game, Phantomatic. A skins game. T just pick four golfers and play a skins game when you're ready. I love skins games. All right. So Bryles has now gone into fatigue. So his control factor goes down by five from 10 to 67 to 10 to 62. So it's now 10 to 62 and will continue to decrease by 5. So Cardinals get their bullpen up. Here's the pitch to Scott who singled and scored. And that is a 18 off the Bryles card. Again, righties, it's death on his card. 0 through 18. And that's a 28. Normally a good roll is a strikeout. So Scott looking to send it out of the yard. He strikes out. One down, Yastrzemski at second. Caligniero at first. He walked. He didn't homer. It was my faux pas. Great call, though. I was very excited. And here comes Reggie Smith. He walked his first time up. Bryles' control factor goes down to 10 through 57. Now here's the pitch to Reggie Smith, and that's a 60. So that's where that comes into play. So we go off the Reggie Smith card, left-handed batter facing a right-handed pitcher. We go off the right-handed pitcher column. And that's a 54. Ground ball. That's a hard-hit ground ball to third. We got to go error check. If it's no error, it's a double play and the inning's over. Error check on Mike Shannon. His defense at third is an 82, and he makes the play. It's a 72. Quickly up and firing to Julian Javier, who turns and throws to Cepeda. That's a 5-4-3 to four to three double play, and the side is retired by Nelson Bryant. Double play. 5-4-3. to four to three. Red Sox strand two. We go to the bottom of the third. Sox still lead 2-1. to one. And Bryles' day is probably done. 
Again, I'm going to modify that because what I've noticed with the older, again, with the older teams, they had guys who pitched in the pen and started. Their stamina, I think you just, they just went on an average with average batters faced. And in modern baseball, that would be fine, but not in 67. Because Santiago could only face 12 batters. Hell, he went the distance with Gibson in game one. In reality. So, I didn't want to modify it now because the Red Sox were not modified. So, we'll play it straight up. But I will modify it going forward. So, due up for the Cardinals to face Gary Ding Dong Bell. The pitcher, Nelson Bryles, Lou Brock, and Kurt Flood. Then we might go with a batter already. In reality, Bryles, see again, Bryles went the distance and he won the game. Gibson pitches next. Well, we'll try to get... Bryles' control factor is going to go down to... It's 57, nice, and it's going to be 52. We're going to leave Bryles in the game. He's going to bat for himself. Here's a pitch from Bell to his counterpart, Bryles. And that is a double zero. My God, triple zeros. Look at that. So we go to the special events chart, range play most likely. And it will be a range play. See who the fielder will be. And that's a 63, a 63 on a range play for the fielder. 63 is the shortstop, Rico Petroselli. Petroselli not with tremendous range. Petroselli's range is an 85. And that is a 42 and an 85. So we go to the 85 column and a 42. Petroselli makes the diving stop, pops up, throws to Scott. Scott scoops it out of the dirt. One away. Nice play by Rico. Robbing Bryles of a hit. Six to three if you're scoring at home. Short to first. Top of the order, Lou Brock. He homered to lead off the game. Second time he's done that in the series. Bryles, um, sorry, Bell deals to Brock. And that's a 74. So we go off the Brock card. Right hand pitcher column. And that's a 73. So that's going to be an out pending the error check. As that's a line shot right at Petroselli. Again, Petroselli's defense at short, 93. Not a range check, defense check. And he makes the leap and catch. So back-to-back -back great plays by Rico Petroselli. Still 2-1 to one Red Sox. Two outs, no one on for Kurt Flood. Flood nubbed one in front of the plate. Howard threw him out. The windup and the pitch from Bell as the yellow die has jumped the shark. Let's grab the yellow die. Here's the pitch to Flood. And that is a 61. So it's going to go off the Flood card, not in Bell's control. And that is an 8. And that is a single to left field. Yastrzemski fields it cleanly. Throws it back into Petroselli, so a two-out single keeps the inning alive for Kurt Flood. Tying run at first, and here comes Roger Maris. Maris homered off Jim Lomborg in game two. He lined out to Jerry Adair in the first inning. Elston Howard goes through the sign, sets the target. Here's the pitch to Roger Maris from Gary Ding Dong Bell. And that is a 26. We go off the Bell card for Maris to reach safely 0 through 22. He's a left-handed batter. It's a double 0. And Bell walks him, pitching a little too fine. Advancing to second is Kurt Flood. He's the tying run in scoring position with two outs. And here comes the National League MVP, the baby bull, Orlando Cepeda. Here's the pitch to Cepeda. Can he tie it up? That's a 92 out of Gary Bell's control. Cepeda looking for a 0 to 45 to reach safely. Righty, righty matchup. And that is a 75. Inning is over. Pending error check. 
A 75 is a line shot to Rico Petroselli as the yellow dies a 6. So Petroselli again makes a diving catch at short. Side is retired. Petroselli saves the day. We go to the top of the fourth, 2-1 to one Boston. Rico Petroselli recording all the outs there. Another line shot. We'll go to the top of the fourth, 2-1 to one Boston. Bryle still in the game. His control factor is now 10 through 57. And he will face Petroselli, the defender of the hour. Elston Howard and Gary Ding Dong Bell, the pitcher who knocked in two runs. Alan Mars in the chat, Living My Rhapsody. How you doing? Check out that great channel. Here's the pitch to Petroselli. He lined out to Julian Javier his first time up. And Bryles gets an 18, so it goes off the Bryles card. 0 through 18, Petroselli needs. And he will not get it. That's a 99! Petroselli drives his ball deep. We go to a ballpark check. That is a long fly ball. 99 to right field. And we're playing at Bush Stadium. And we have to look at Petroselli's power rating. 73. Oh, man. Bush Stadium is a big stadium. So a 73. Need a 0 through 6. And it's a 17. So Maris back at the wall. He leaps and makes the catch. Robbing Petroselli of extra bases. Great catch by Roger Maris, who's also thrown out Reggie Smith at the plate. So Petroselli's out. As Maris makes the play, Elston Howard flew out to Lou Brock his first time up and left. Bryles deals to Bra uh, Howard, and that is a 46. So we had a, it's now 10 through 52. He's still in control. 46 off the Bryles card. Righty righty matchup. And that's a 50. That's a ground ball to Maxville at short. And he throws to Cepeda for out number two, six to three. So now minus five. It goes to 10 through 47. Bryles trying to get through four innings here. Down two to one. And he will face Gary Ding Dong Bell, the pitcher. Who with two outs singled and knocked in two runs. Bryles deals to his counterpart, part Bell, and that's a 97. Wouldn't matter what the check is. It's out of his range anyway. We go off the hitter's card for the Red Sox for the pitcher, and that's a 92. That ball is a 92. So Bell lifts it up in the air, 92. And that ball goes out to right field, and Roger Maris. So error check on Maris as he races towards the line. And he makes the catch side retired as Maris bangs into the side wall. One, two, three. Go the Red Sox. So Maris flashing the leather in the top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's two to one Boston. I think we got to take out Bryles because his control now goes down to... 10 through 42. And let's do a quick check on Gary Ding Dong Bell to see his fatigue factor. 1, 2, 3, down to 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down to 11. So he can face 11 more batters. Uh, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. So Bell with a 2-1 to one lead. He knocked in the two runs to help his own cause and the cause of the Boston Red Sox. They trail the Cardinals in the series two games to none. And Bell will face McCarver, Shannon, and Javier. Tim McCarver flew out to Yastrzemski and left his first time up. Here's the pitch to McCarver. And that is a 66. Gary Bell will not get his kicks on Route 66. We go off the McCarver card. And against right-handed pitching, he reaches base safely, 0 through 48. And that is a 90. A 90. And that ball goes out to left field. And Yastrzemski, Yastrzemski's error rating. And that's a 45. Yastrzemski makes the running catch in front of the wall. One down. 
So once again, McCarver flies out to Yaz. Deja vu all over again, in the words of the late great Yogi Berra. And here comes Mike Shannon. He flew out to Reggie Smith. Bryles picks up the sign from Howard. He deals to Shannon. And that is a 0-4. We go to a range play. And that's a 35. And a 35 is a range play for the second baseman, Jerry Adair. Jerry Adair's range, not stellar, 69. And he gets to it, 36. So a 69 and a 36. Adair makes the diving stop from his knees, throws to Scott for the out. Nice play by Jerry Adair. 4-3 to three if you're scoring at home. Two outs, base is empty for Julian Javier. Javier popped out to Jerry Adair. Or lined out to Jerry Adair, excuse me. Here's the pitch to Javier. Bell deals him a 57. That's out of Bell's control factor. We go off the Javier card. And that's an 80. That will end the inning pending error check. As that's a line shot to Rico Petroselli. And Petroselli once again goes high in the air and snares it. The side is retired as Petroselli flips the ball to the umpire and jogs to the dugout. Cool as a cucumber. Rico Petroselli. We go to the top of the fifth, 2-1 to one Boston. Bryles Day. He's up second in the bottom. He's going he's gonna to try to pitch a little more. See if we can get him through five. And he will face the top of the order in the top of the fifth. Jerry Adair, Dalton Jones, and Carly Ostremski. His control factor for Bryles now is 10 through 42. Gary Ding Dong Bell's fatigue factor he can still face eight batters before fatigue sets in. Bryles is past the fatigue factor. That's why his control decreases by five with each batter. So Adair digs in. Here's the pitch from Nelson Bryles. And that's a 57. Normally would be in his control, but fatigue has set in. Righty, righty matchup. And that is a 19. Jerry Adair singles to center. Fielding it is Kurt Flood, and he throws it back in. No error on the error check. So a single by Jerry Adair. And that's his second hit. So he leads off the top of the fifth with a single. Two to one Red Sox, and that could be it. I think that is it for Mr. Bryles. Bryles went four innings, and he's fatigued. And let's see who we're going to go to. Um, in reality, he went the distance. Let's let's and then Gibson goes the next game and he went the distance. So let's just see for a second. Gibson goes the distance as they won six to nothing in game four. Game five. Let's see who they threw in game five as a starter. Carlton. Okay, we can pitch anyone but Carlton. So the Cardinals are going to go to their pen. And we're going to go with we're going to go with Larry last uh, Larry Jaster. He's a lefty. Righty's only hit 249 off of him. Lefty's 217. Oh, Jack Lamaby.
We're going to go uh, Larry. Actually, we're going to go Jack Lamavie. We're going to go Jack Lamavie. Former Red Sox. Jack Lamavie. So Jack Lamavie comes in the game. Nelson pitches four. He's responsible for a dare at first. And will we go double switch here? No, we won't. That's why we're going to go with Lamaby. Because we'd have to take out... The Cardinals bench is atrocious. There's not going to be no double switches with this team. So Jack Lamaby will come in. To keep it a one-run deficit, hopefully, if you're a Cardinals fan. And Lamaby is a right-handed thrower. Control factor 10 through 61, and he's good for eight batters. His hold rating is minus 10, but the Red Sox are a slow-footed team. They're not stealing anything. All right, Adair is at first, and here comes Dalton Jones. Dalton Jones' bunting capabilities of 55. Contacts in 86. We're going to play hit and run with Jerry Adair at first. Dalton Jones. So we go to the hit and run chart. Just straight up and go to the hit and run chart. And he's an 86 contact. With Jerry Adair at first. And Lambaby on the mound. We go to the hit and run chart. I know I've said it 52,000 times. Lambaby. 23 games, only one start, 22 relief appearances, 2.83 earned run average, 3 and 4 with 4 saves. And Dalton Jones, 86 for contact, and off the hit, uh, hit and run chart, he reaches base safely. Zero through 30. Here's the pitch to Dalton Jones from Lamaby, and it's a 74. That's not going to be good. We rolled the dice, and I don't think that's going to be a good result, folks. So Dalton Jones, 86, hit and run on the contact. We rolled a 74. Ooh, that's going to be ugly. It's a ground out. Oh, that's not bad. Runner... Is safe at second. They get Dalton Jones at first, so they stay out of the double play. As that ball was hit to second base. So a fielder's choice advances Jerry Adair. As Dalton Jones is out four to three. So Adair's in scoring position. And here comes Carl Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski has flown out to center and singled in his last plate appearance. Yaz looking for something he can grip and rip. Lamaby picks up the sign from McCarver. He deals to Yastrzemski, the American League MVP. That is a 29 off the Lamaby card. Yaz needs a 0 through 20. And it's a 73. He does not get that. That's going to be an out. As that's a line shot to left. And Brock is there and he makes the catch. Two down. Staying put at second is Jerry Adair. And here comes Tony Caligneri. singled and walked. Al Red Sox fan got very excited his second time up. He thought he had a two-run homer. Here's the pitch to Tony C from Jack Lamaby. And that's an 86. And that's going to go off the Caligniero card. Tony Clignier in a righty-righty matchup needs a 0 through 44. Read the green die first, Al. This time, Al reads it correctly. 28. This could knock in a run. Two outs. There'll be no modification check. So that is a 28 off the Tony Clignier card. And that's a single to right. So Maris has already thrown out a runner at the plate. He's at, Maris is a minus 5 arm. Jerry Adair, 76 speed. They're waving him around with two outs. We need a 71 or lower. 
And he scores as the throw is offline. Maris rushed it. It's a 15. And Tony Caligniero is now 2 for 2 with a ribby and a walk. Jerry Adair scores from second. The Red Sox lead 3 to 1. As Caligniero picks up the RBI. Inning stays alive. As Adair is greeted in the dugout. To hugs and high fives. And here comes George the Boomer Scott. Scott has singled and scored on the Gary Ding Dong Bell two-out single, which he knocked in two, Kalignier and Scott, and then struck out. Lamaby takes a deep breath, arms down to his chest, the wind-up and the pitch to the Boomer. That is a 12 off the Lamaby card. And a 21! A 12 and a 21! And that's a swing and a miss! A mighty swing by the Boomer. He hit nothing but air. Side is retired as Scott strikes out for the second time. But the Red Sox add to their tally. They get one on the RBI single by Tony Caligiero. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Three to one, Boston. Gary Ding Dong Bell back out on the mound. Good for eight more batters. And he'll face Dahl Maxville, Nelson Bra uh Dahl Maxville, Jack Lamaby, and Lou Brock. Probably a pinch hitter for Lamaby. In the chat, we have Stratomatic Delaware. How you doing, my friend? Check out that wonderful channel. And ID Gesture, a huge Cardinals fan. Check him out. Another wonderful channel. All right. So let's make sure we got the fatigue check correct for Gary Bell. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yep, 8. You can face 8 more batters. So here's Dahl Maxville. He popped out to Elston Howard his first time up. Bell's ready to work. He deals to Maxville. The right-handed batting shortstop. That's a 24 off the Gary Ding Dong Bell card. And a 79. This is an out. A 79. The ball is up in the air. Wave your hands like you just don't care. As that ball goes out to right field, Caligniero's there. He makes the catch. One down. Three to one. Will we let Lamaby hit? Three to one. I don't think they'd let Lamaby hit. I think, I think they'd go a pinch hitter, even though they have a crappy bench. And we're then we'll bring in Larry uh, Jaster. And here comes Bobby Tolan. He batted 269 off right-handed. So Bobby Tolan will bat for Jack Lamaby. So Lamaby day is done. He went one inning. He led an inherited runner score. That was the RBI. Uh, the earned run went against Bryles, though. And then coming into pitch will be, I just had him out, will be Jaster, Larry Jaster, the lefty. So here is Bobby Tolan, one out. Tolan had five home runs off right-handed pitching. Gary Bell peers in at Elston Howard. He deals. To Bobby Tolan, and that is a 37 off the Gary Ding Dong Bell card. Lefties to reach safely need a 0 through 22, and that's an 88. That ball's up in the air. An 88 is a pop up to Adair at second, and he makes the play. So Bell comes in high and tight, and Tolan pops out to Jerry Adair. You write down Bobby Tolan's name. So two outs. No one on as Tolan pops out to Adair. Top of the order, Lou Brock. Brock homered. Second time he's led off a game with a home run. He is one for two. He lined out to Petroselli who made a great play at short in the third. 
Bell looking for a 1-2-3 inning. He deals to Lou Brock. That is an 89. We go off the Brock card. There will, will be an error check if the ball is put in play. Brock a 21. And Brock on a 21 is a single to center. No error. We roll a 43. So Lou Brock keeps the inning alive with a single to center. As Brock returns to sender. Here in the bottom of the fifth, tying run at first base in the speedy Lou Brock. Gary Bell has a minus nine to hold. Okay. Brock's steal rating is an 88. Minus nine makes it an 81. No modification for stealing second, just the uh, pitcher and the catcher's arms. So that's an 81. Howard makes it a minus 5, so that's a 76. Brock's going to attempt to steal second base, 76 or under. He's safe, and he slides in safely as that's a 55, so Lou Brock steals second. He's in scoring position. That's a stolen base for Brock. He's in scoring position with two outs, so there is going to be no modification on that. And here's Kurt Flood, chance to tie it, as this is a moment of truth here. And Flood is one for two off Gary Bell. Nubbed it to Howard in front of the plate, who threw him out, then singled in the third. Elston Howard wiggles the fingers. Bell nods his head. The windup and the pitch to Kurt Flood. That is a 79. We go to the Flood card. Righty, righty matchup. He reaches base safely. 0 through 51. Great opportunity. I'm sorry, 0 through 45. And that is a 6. And he walks. So Bell loses him. And now it's first and second. Go ahead, run at first, and Flood speed is 77. He doesn't steal base as well, but has good speed. And here comes Roger Maris. He homered off Jim Lomborg in game two. He homered off Jim Lomborg in game two. In tonight's matchup, game three, the Cardinals, the ID gestures joy, are up two games to none. Again, if the Cardinals win this game, they go up three to zip with Bob Gibson on the mound for game four. It's going to be a sweep. Red Sox have to win this one. Maris has lined out to Jerry Adair and walked. Bell. A bead of sweat coming down Bell's forehead. He rocks and fires to Maris. And that is a 48 off the Gary Ding Dong Bell card. Maris needs off of Bell's card a 0 through 22. And it is an 11. Maris comes through in the clutch. An 11 is a single to right. And they're going to wave Lou Brock around. Caligniero's arm is a minus 5. Brock's speed is... Is a 79. It goes to 74. Let me just mark this stuff down real quick. Bear with me a moment. So Maris singles to right. We don't need to know that. Flood advancing towards second. They're waving. Brock around. Will this game be tied? Here comes Caligniero. He's throwing to the plate. And it's a 58 sliding in safely. As the throw is just off the line, Howard dives back for the tag, but not in time as Brock slides across home plate. We have a tie ball game. Roger Maris has tied it up. It is 2-2. Two two. In the bottom of the fifth, Flood holds at second. And Maris picks up an RBI. This game is... I have to, I've gone through it a few times, the rules and stuff, to see... Um, about the advancing, um, you know what, let's just take a look again, I, it, it, they seem to have missed that, you know when you play a game, and I love this game, it's really fun to me, uh, it's like they miss certain things, every, uh, that's the one thing I can say Strat's good at, they don't miss a thing, well, I mean, they have redundant plays, but, okay, single, 
runner from second on any single. Yeah, see, they don't talk about the secondary runners. So I just hold, I hold everybody because I don't want, I'm not sure about that. So, and I've done it for both teams when it's happened. So, all right. So the Cardinals tie it up at two. Go ahead running. Kurt Flood's at second. Insurance running. Roger Maris, who just tied it with a two out single at first. And Bell, one, two, three, four, five, can face three more batters before fatigue sets in. It's two to two, and he'll have to face the National League MVP, the baby bull, Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda has doubled. He was stranded at second in the first. And lined to Petroselli. In the inning of Rico Petroselli in the third, he made a diving stop to rob the pitcher Nelson Bryles of a hit. Then he made a leaping catch on a line drive from Brock. And then a diving catch. Uh, a, a, a one step and a dive to Rob McCarver as McCarver bidded to go uh, bid to go the other way for a hit. So Bell to Cepeda, here's the pitch, and that's a 52, and it will go off the Gary Ding Dong Bell card. Cepeda, a right-handed batter, needs a zero through 17. Bell really tough on righties, and that is a. 94, the inning is over, as that ball is up in the air, 94, out to center field, Reggie Smith goes back a few steps, and he makes the catch, the side is retired, but not before, Roger Maris ties it up with a two-out single, we go to the top of the sixth, in a 2-2 ball game here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And we have a new pitcher for the Cardinals. It will be in this 2-2 ball game, as this is a must-win for the Red Sox. Bob Gibson goes in game four. Larry Jaster, now let's just write down his numbers. Jaster's control factor, 10 through 59. Stamina, he can face 19 batters. And his hold is minus three. Larry Jaster. And he's a left-handed tosser. Well, that didn't sound right. And we'll worry about his defense just off of his own card. Because it's right here. We can see it quite quickly. So Jaster comes in the game here in the top of the six. Bryles went four. He's off the hook. Lamaby went one. And it's now Larry Jaster's game. He will face Reggie Smith, Rico Petroselli, and Elston Howard. And let's just quickly go through the bell. Eight. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wrong one. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bell can face two more batters. So we might go to Sparky Lyle. Reggie Smith strides to the plate. Smith walked and was thrown out at the plate by Roger Maris and then banged into a double play, 5-4-3 to four to three in the third. Lefty on the mound. Reggie Smith, the switch hitter, now bats from the right side. Against lefties, he hit 285 with four homers. Jaster deals to Reggie Smith. And that is a 12 off the Laster card. Lefty-lefty matchup. And 0 through 19 for Reggie Smith to reach safely. And it's a 9. And Reggie Smith singles to center. So Reggie Smith is on with a single. Right back at Laster. Jaster can't make the play. Goes into center. And here comes Rico Petroselli. He's old for two. He lined out to Julian Javier at second, then flew out deep to Roger Maris in right. Maris made a leaping catch banging into the wall. Petroselli, I don't think we'll bunt because Elson Howard's on deck and we're going to pinch it. Well, but oh, no, no. Howard hit 303 off lefties. I probably should have brought a righty in.
Petroselli's bunting ability is an 85. Petroselli's going to try to move the runner over. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Stealing. Oh, wow. Reggie Smith's only a 58. Then you have a minus nine, uh, minus three. Yeah, he's staying put. Petroselli's going to attempt to bunt. He's an 85 bunter on a sacrifice. So let's go to the sacrifice bunting chart. Petroselli's going to try to move Smith over the go-ahead run from first. Here's the sacrifice chart. So an 85 bunter, he needs a 0 through 64. Here's the pitch from Jaster. Petroselli squares, and it's a 36. So Reggie Smith will get to second. Let's just see what happens as Al Red Sox fan has lost his pen and his mind. What the heck? Well, we'll just go to the backup pen. That's all we can do, folks. We can only go to the backup pen. So he rolls a 36 on the sacrifice bunt out of the 85 column. And a 36 is fielded by McCarver. His only play is the first. So the sack works. There's one out. Ah, there's my pen. There's one out. And Reggie Smith to go ahead and run at second. On the sack bunt by Petroselli. And that went 2-3 to three as McCarver throws to Cepeda. And Elston Howard comes to the plate. And we might... He hit 303 off righties. Joe Horner's the closer. Washburn. Oof, that's an ugly card. Ron Willis, 242. Hal Woodschick. I, how, that is like that is one of the funnest names to say. Hal Woodschick. Jaster. We gotta turn. We gotta turn Howard around. But if they do that, then we're gonna counter. We can go Joe Foy. Joe Foy will pinch it for Elston Howard, thus forcing Foy batted 309 off lefties with four home runs, only 235. So Joe Foy makes his first appearance. He will pinch it for Howard. Joe Foy played a lot of third base, probably the majority of third base in 67 for the Red Sox. Didn't see a lot of time in the World Series, though. So Joe Foy will come in to pinch hit for Howard. And that definitely will... Now we're going to go to a righty in this 2-2 ball game with one out. And the righty... Uh, we're going to go with Ron Willis. Ron Willis, right, he's only batted 242 off of him. Ray Washburn. Yeah, Ron Willis. He's good for five batters. So Jaster pitches a third of an inning. And his day's done. No double switch because their bench is god awful. It's amazing they won 101 games with that bench. So Ron Willis comes in. Foy had much less success against righties. So Ron Willis comes in. He's a right-handed thrower. Minus 10 for the hold. Stamina 5, strictly out of the bullpen. And control factor 10 through 63. So his job is to get through this inning. And 67, 6, and 5 with 10 saves and a 2.67 earned run average. Ron Willis is in the ball game for the Cardinals. Itinerary Hobbyist has joined us in the chat. Hello, my friend. Hope all is well. We're going to have a chat with Al. Uh, uh, their OG, the original Grognard, is chomping at the bit for a chat with Al. And, he, and we all would love to have you on it. 
uh, Todd. So, whenever you're ready to come on to join our merry bunch of men for a special guest appearance. So here's Joe Foy. Foy, who was hoping to face the lefty Jaster, will now face the righty Willis. He batted 235 against right-handed pitching. He did have 12 home runs, though. 2-2 Two -two ball game. Reggie Smith at second. Smith, if you're wondering, his speed is 76. Willis has a final word with McCarver. McCarver goes back behind the plate, squats down, sets the target. Here's the pitch of the pinch hitter, Joe Foy. And that is a 17, so we go off the Ron Willis card. And a right-handed batter to reach safely needs a 0 through 24. And it is a 44. Ground ball. Ground ball to third. Up with it. And throwing is Shannon to Cepeda. Holding at second is Reggie Smith. A hard hit ball. Nice backhanded play by Shannon. And staying pat is Reggie Smith. So there's two outs now. Two outs now. As Foy grounds out five to three. Gary Bell will not bat. Mike Andrews will come in to hit. Mike Andrews batted 260 off right handed pitching. So here comes Mike Andrews to bat. For Gary Bell, the pitcher, Bell, no decision, gave a good effort here today. As we're in the top of the sixth, he went five. 2-2 Two -two ball game. And Sparky Lyle. Sparky Lyle, who's coming up next? He had a tough time against lefties, ironically, and he's a left-handed thrower. McCarver, Shannon, Javi, a bunch of righties. So Sparky Lyle is up in the pen. It looks like it'll be Lyle. So Lyle's up in the pen for the bottom of the sixth. And here comes Mike Andrews. Mike Andrews, Red Sox second baseman. Has not started yet in the series. He's had two pinch hit appearances. He's one for two with a ribby. His one hit came off Gibson in game one. He knocked in the first run for the Red Sox. Reggie Smith will be off on contact at second. 2-2 ball game. Willis picks up the sign from McCarver. Here's the pitch to Mike Andrews. That is a 40 off the Willis card again. 0 through 24, and Andrews reaches safely, and that's a 51. That's a ground ball to short. Up with it is Maxville. He throws to first. Side is retired. Nice range by Maxville, moving towards the second base bag on that play. Red Sox leave Reggie Smith to go ahead run at second. We go to the bottom of the sixth still. 2-2 two to two here in St. Louis. So Sparky Lyle gets the call out of the pen. And let's just write down Sparky's numbers. Sparky Lyle. Another stinky trade by the Red Sox. They traded him to the Yankees for Danny freaking Cater. Danny Cater. Yeah. Another bad trade the Red Sox made in their history. And he's a left-handed thrower, though he does struggle against left-handed batters. His hold, man, he is does not hold on runners, you would say. He's a plus 10. So God forbid Lou Brock gets on. You can just hand him second base. Stamina, he's good for six batters. Control factor, outstanding, 10 through 67. Here's Sparky Lyle, 2-2 two -two ball game, bottom of the six. The first batter you face will be the left-hand batting catcher, Tim McCarver. 
And today, McCarver is 0 for 2. He has flown out the other way twice to left field in Carl Yastrzemski. Here's the pitch from Lyle to McCarver. And that is a 32 off the Sparky Lyle card. No error check. And that's a 55. A 55 off the Lyle card is a ground ball. And I think the three was there before I knocked it to first base. And covering the bag is Lyle as Scott tosses to Lyle who steps on the bag for out number one. So Lyle, who has trouble retiring lefties, takes care of Tim McCarver. As that goes 3-1. to one. And here comes Mike Shannon, the third baseman. He's 0 for 2. He's flown out to Reggie Smith in center and grounded to Jerry Adair at second. Lyle sets and deals to Shannon. And that is a 41 off the Sparky Lyle card. Righties. Need a 0 through 18. That's an 83. And an 83 is a ball up in the air. Wave your hands like you just don't care. As Lyle jams him. Pops it up. George the Boomer Scott in foul territory. Waits for the ball to come down. And that's out number 2. So Sparky Lyle is dealing. So two outs. Base is empty. For the second baseman, Julian Javier, he's 0 for 2. He's popped out to second and lined out to Rico Petroselli at short. Oh, we got to put a new catcher in. Joe Foy is not catching. In my mind, I had the catcher in. And we're going to go with Russ Gibson. So, Russ Gibson... I should have done a double. Ah, that's all right. Russ Gibson is in catching now. Starter in game one. All righty. And Julian Javier is at the plate. Shit, did I already roll that? Well, doesn't matter now. I forgot. Here's the pitch from Lyle to Javier. And that's a 68. Probably going to be a freaking home run now. And we go off the Javier card. And he reaches base safely against the left-handed pitcher. 0 through 43. And as I stated, that is a home run as he crushes that ball off Sparky Lyle. And the Cardinals take a 3-2 to two lead. Yeah, there's lots of charts. Lots of charts. No, I don't use them all. I only use the game ones, but even then, there's still lots of charts. So Julian Javier, because Al couldn't remember if he rolled, and I told you he was gonna, I was going to roll a home run, and I did. And the Cardinals take a 3-2 to two lead as Sparky Lyle gives up the homer to Julian Javier. And to the joy of Cardinals fans here at Bush Stadium. So here comes Dahl Maxville to a... Very disgusted Sparky Lyle on the mound. Here's the pitch to Maxville, and that's a 72. So Lyle still a bit shook up. We go off the Maxville card. That's an 11, and an 11 is a walk. So they're getting to Sparky Lyle after he gets the first two outs. And now bring up the pitcher, Ron Willis. Ron Willis is good for five, and he faced one, two, three, four. So we're going to pinch hit for Ron Willis. Cardinals will pinch hit for Ron Willis, and then we'll see another new pitcher. And it's going to be... Man, th their bench stinks. I, I don't want to go with our backup catcher. I mean, we can. We're playing without injuries. You know what? Let's go with our backup catcher. There's no injuries in the game, so. Dave Ricketts gets the call. Backup catcher. 
and he batted 250 against lefties. Switch hitter, so he's batting righty. So Dave Ricketts. Now, in reality, they would never do this, but we are playing non-reality. It's a dice baseball game. Now, Red Sox fan knows they wouldn't do this. Did they carry a third catcher? I don't think so. And he's the pinch hitter. So Dave Ricketts. Bats for Willis. Willis Day is done. He pitched two-thirds of an inning. And here's Mr. Ricketts. Three to two Cardinals on the Julian Javier Homer off Sparky Lyle. Max fills at first. Here's the pitch to Ricketts from Lyle. And that's a 47 off the Lyle card. Righty, righty. And a 54. And that will close the door on the inning. A 54 is a ground ball to Jerry Adair. He throws to first side, is retired. But Sparky Lyle gives up a two run homer to Julian Javier, and it's now 3 to 2 Cardinals as they are on the verge of a 3 0 lead with Bob Gibson going in game four. Can you say, shut the door? And the Cardinals. We'll go to another pitch. It's too early to go to their closer, Joe Horner. He's only good for five batters. The Cardinals are going to go with... Corner is going to close it out. Carlton goes in the next game. Uh, Gibson goes in the next game, then Carlton, then Gibson again. So Ray Washburn did not pitch in the series. So Ray Washburn Ah, he never threw out of the pen. We can't use him unless in an emergency. So they're going to go to Hal Wood. Wow. They're going to go with Dick Hughes, game number one starter. Will come out of the pen in game three. And look to bridge the gap to Joe Horner. I just don't think they would have went to Woodchick in this situation. So, and Dick Hughes had 10 relief appearances. So we have to modify this. He's not going to have a 24 stamina. We're going to say he has a 10, 10 batter stamina. I think that sounds about right. Pitching game one. Uh, Ten batter stamina. Because use in game one. I mean game two. Game two. Oh man, we can't use him. He pitched in game two. He went six and two thirds. We can't use Dick Hughes. They wouldn't have done that. Oh God. We have to go to Gary Woodchick. You know what? I think they would go to Ray Washburn out of the pen, even though he never went out of the pen. And we'll say he's good for six batters. 29. We'll say six batters. So the Cardinals get one in the bottom of six. We go to the top of the seventh, and it's going to be the starter, Ray Washburn. So Ray Washburn comes in. Let me double check to make sure Mr. Washburn definitely did not pitch in the next few games coming up. Again, doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get it sort of close. Gibson wins the next game, which I already knew, 6 nothing. That's gross. Then the Red Sox... 
in a must win. Lomborg beats Carlton. And this is incredible. In game seven, on two days rest, Lomborg takes the ball again, but he loses. That's just freaking incredible to me. And they had pitched him on two days. Re oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I missed something here. That's game six. The Red Sox won game six. Yeah. Yeah, Washburn didn't get a start. I don't see him starting. So Washburn comes in. He's good for six batters. Here comes Washburn, and he's a right-handed thrower. Again, we're giving him six batters. First, he hasn't thrown out of the pen all year. Big moment here. And he's a minus 10 for hold and a 10 through 52 control factor. Top of the seventh. Another new pitcher is Ray Washburn. Do up for the Red Sox in the top of the seventh. Top of the order. Jerry Adair, Dalton Jones, and Carly Ostramski to face Ray Washburn. Here's the pitch to Jerry Adair. And that is a 16 off the Washburn card. Righties need a 0 through 23. And that's an out. That's an 87. 87 is a ball. Up in the air, pop up, Cepeda at first has it, one down. And here comes Dalton Jones. Jones is 0 for 3. He did strike out in the first. Washburn deals to Jones, and that is an 80. So it goes off the Dalton Jones card. Jones reaches base safely, 0 through 43. And Dalton Jones! Make sure you read the ball right before we go through the whole... 43! Dalton Jones has just jacked a home run to tie it up. As he turns on it and sends it to right, Marius admires the ball, and that's out of here. So Dalton Jones ties it up for the Red Sox at 3. And much joy in the Red Sox dugout as Dalton Jones touches them all. To the moans and groans, and now the sounds of silence to the Cardinals fans here at Bush Stadium. Dalton Jones homers. And we have our tie ball game. It's 3-3. Three to three. So Jones matches Javier's homer in the bottom of the sixth. Here in the top of the seventh. And here comes Carl Yastrzemski. Washburn has blown the save. Here's the pitch to Yaz. American League Triple Crown winner, and that is a 0-4. Fielding range check. We're not even going to go with him. We're just saying range check. So who's it going to be to? 21. And a 21 on a range play is the first baseman, Orlando Cepeda. And Cepeda's range... is an 82... Can Yaz sneak one by him? And that's a 29. So I think on an 82-29, Cepeda knocks the ball down, picks it up. Underhand toss to Washburn, covering the bag. Two down. Nice play by Cepeda. As that goes 3-1. to one, And here comes Tony Caligniero. He has singled twice, scored, knocked in a run, and walked. 3-3 three, three ball game. And here's Tony C. He awaits the Ray Washburn offering. Pitch homeward bound. That's a 63. Washburn is not in control. It'll go off the Caligniero card. He reaches base safely 0 through 44. That is a 30. So Tony Caligniero's hot hitting will continue. 
as he singles to right. He now has three hits and three official at-bats with a walk. So Caligniero singles. Go ahead, run at first. 3-3 three, three ball game. And here comes the Boomer. He struck out twice and singled back in the first. Scored on a two-out single by Gary Ding Dong Bell, the pitcher. Washburn deals to Scott. That's a 62 out of Washburn's control. So there's a reason why I guess he didn't pitch out of the pen. And here's the pitch to Scott. Is a 23. They're getting at Washburn here, knowing that their World Series life is on the line. That is a 23 and off the Scott card. A 23 is a single to center. A single to center. Caligniero moves 90 feet and stops. Go ahead run in scoring position as Boomer picks up his second. He has two singles and in between two strikeouts. And I'll bring up Reggie Smith. Horner's ready. In the pen. Here's the pitch. The switch hitting Reggie Smith batting lefty. Oh, the red die has jumped it. The red die has jumped it. And it's a 40, so it's going to be in control anyway. So it's a 45. Not that it matters because he stays in control. And now... Oh, wow, that's an 11. Smith is batting left-handed on an 11. That's a single to center. So Reggie Smith looking to knock in the go-ahead run. Single to center. Petroselli's on deck. Two outs, no modification for trying to score from second. Uh, Kurt Flood is a minus five, four. Minus four. Caligniero's speed is a 75-71. They're waving Tony C around, and he scores! The Red Sox go up 4-3 to three on the clutch single by Reggie Smith, as that's a 23. So Caligniero scores his second run. The Red Sox go up 4-3, to three and Washburn has pooped himself, and he'll need new pantalones out on that mound. Scott moves up to second. Reggie Smith picks up a clutch two-out RBI. He can face one more batter with two outs. Horner, they don't want to bring him in yet. Now they're down. So he'll face Rico Petroselli. Here's the pitch to Petroselli. Red Sox looking to add to it. That's a 44 off the Washburn card. And a 58 Ground ball to short. Maxville has it. Flips to Javier for the force out at second. Side retired, but the Red Sox score two. Dalton Jones ties it up with a homer. And then Reggie Smith knocks in Tony Caligniero from second. The Red Sox take a 4-3 to three lead. I'm sorry, a 5-3. to. Th Did I mess that up? Red Sox, 2-1. Three, three, four, five, three lead. Red Sox take a five, three lead. Simple math, Al. Come on. So Petroselli is out six to four. Washburn was bad. <laughs> His day's done. Go to the bottom of the seventh. And... I think Sparky Lyle's day is done. Lyle pitched one inning, and it, that was bad. One, two, three, four, five. Um, who's coming up will be the pitcher. No, I'm sorry. Coming up will be top of the order, Lou Brock. He's a lefty, and Lyle will not face him. He's awful against lefties. And with nine outs to go... Up. Five to three. One, two, three. Yep, five to three. Nine outs to go. John Wyatt, the closer, is only good for six. 
We need someone to bridge the gap. Olsinski is going to get a start, which is mind-boggling to me. Jerry Stevens. Jerry Stevens will come in. Jerry Stevens will come in the game and try to bridge the gap to John Wyatt. Oh, we got Lee Stangy. I forgot about Lee. I knew I was missing somebody. Lee Stang, excuse me. Oh, Stevens is tougher on lefties. So Stevens will come in to face Brock. Stang's ready in the bullpen. Here comes Jerry Stevenson. Red Sox cannot lose this game. And he's a right-handed thrower. He had six starts and two relief appearances. Three and one with a save. 3.86 earned run average. 20 stamina. We're going to give him 10 out of the bullpen. 10, minus 10 to hold runners on. Control factor, this is where you can get them. Only 10 through 45. And here comes Lou Brock. Cardinals down 5 to 3. Here's the pitch to Brock. That is a 47. And that just stays in Stevenson's control factor. No, it does not. That's a 45. So we go to the Brock card. And that's a 61. For Lou Brock. And that is a ground ball to third. Oh, God. Dalton Jones. He's already made two errors in the series. And that's a 72. And his his error is an 82. Or higher than an 82. So he makes the play. Fumbles around with it. But a good strong throw to Scott. And that's one down. Whew, sigh of relief. Breathe. By the Red Sox bench as that goes five to three in the bottom of the seventh. Here comes Kurt Flood. Stevenson works quickly to Flood. And that's a zero three. We go to the range play. And that's a twenty-one. As we're skipping all over that other nonsense. I just want range plays. Most of the time it doesn't matter. So that's a twenty-one. And that's going to be to the first baseman, George the Boomer Scott. Scott's range is a 69. That's not good. That's the worst range you can have. And that's a 28. You might make this play, though. Uh, 28. And he does. He backhands it and throws to Stevenson covering the bag. So two up, two down. So far, so good for Jerry Stevenson as that goes three to one. And here comes Roger Maris. Maris trying to keep the inning alive. Russ Gibson behind the mound now, uh, behind the plate. Sets the target. Here's the pitch to Roger Maris. And that's a 33. Jerry Stevenson is dealing. Lefties need a 0 through 22 to reach safely. And that's a 41. Ground ball right back at Stevenson. He throws the first side retired. Jerry Stevenson does his J-O-B. We go to the top of the eighth, and it is 5-3 Boston. And Washburn will not be on the mound. Come back. It might not. OBS is back up. You got to love OBS. So Hal Woodschick comes in. Say that 52 times fast. Here in the top of the eighth. Five to three Red Sox. And he's a lefty. And he's good for six batters. And he's a plus 10. So the Red Sox might actually be able to steal a base on the hold factor. And his control is awful. Ugh. 10 through 30.
And due up for the Red Sox, Russ Gibson, and then most likely a pinch hitter. Though we have to think about that. We have Lee Sting ready. Probably depends what Howard does, uh, Gibson does. And then the top of the order. All right, Russ Gibson gets his first at-bat since entering the game. Again, Woodchick's control is 0 through 30. And that's an 83. It goes off the Russ Gibson card. And against lefties, Gibson batted 303. And that's a 70. He's not going to get anything there except pain and suffering. There will be an error check as that's a line shot to center. And Kurt Flood... And he makes the diving catch. So Flood robs Gibson. And that's one out. And Stevenson will bat for himself. Red Sox feel comfortable with Stevenson on the mound. So Stevenson will bat. Go off the pitcher's card if we go there. The wind up in the pitch from Woodchick to his counterpart Stevenson. And that's a 41. We go to the pitcher's card. We probably should have had a pinch hitter if I think about that now because it's 10 through 30. And we need a 0 through 20. And we get a 5. <laughs> Gary Stevenson. Now Jerry Stevenson singles to left. Oh, you don't want to give up a hit to the pitcher. I don't care what year it is. So Stevenson. They stick with them, and he does them proud. As he gets a single. So Stevenson is a right-handed batter. We should have looked at that. Yes, he is. And he singles to left here in the top of the eighth with one out. Top of the order to Jerry Adair. Jerry Adair. Here's the pitch to Jerry from Woodshick, and that's a 28. I'll go off the Woodshick card, and that's a 29, and a 29 is a swing and a miss. Oh, a 28 would have been a homer. Red Sox could have possibly put the game away, but Woodshick bears down and strikes out Adair, so there's two outs. Stevenson will be off on contact. And his speed is 70 off the pitcher's batting card. And here comes Dalton Jones. He homered to put the Red Sox ahead. They would tack on another one in the top of the seventh to go up 5-3. to three. Lefty, lefty matchup. We don't have another third baseman. We already used Foy. Though we could move George Scott to third. We might go to the Hawk. We might go to the Hawk. Ken Hawk Harrelson, 222 off lefties. Tartable, who's a lefty, batted 235. George Thomas, 167. We're going to go to the Hawk. Ken the Hawk Harrelson, who they picked up off waivers, I believe, from the Chicago White... Uh, was it the Chicago White Sox or the Kansas City Athletics? So Ken the Hawk Harrelson will come in to pinch hit. He'll stay in to play first. Scott will move over to third. So Ken the Hawk Harrelson will pinch hit for Dalton Jones. Here in the top of the eighth. And he'll stay in to play first base. And Scott will move from first to third. The windup and the pitch from Woodshick to Ken the Hawk Harrelson. That is a 34. It goes to the Hawk Harrelson card. And off lefties, he needs a 0 through 27. And he gets a 31, which is a big swing and a miss. Side retired. He had a pitch to drive, and he missed it. A little over-anxious there. We go to the bottom of the eighth, five to three Red Sox. So Hawk Harrelson will stay in to play first. And Scott moves over to play third, and we have to remember that in error checks. Stevenson 
stays out on the mound. To try to get to John Wyatt, the closer, with a 5 to 3 lead. Alrighty, due up for the Cardinals, Cepeda, McCarver, and Mike Shannon. Here in the bottom of the eighth. Stevenson, good for 10 batters, and he faced three. It's good for another seven. Cepeda, one for two, he doubled. Here's the pitch to the baby bull. That is an 11. We go off the Stevenson card. Cepeda's a righty-righty matchup, and that's a 79. That is an out. A 79 is a ball that 79 looks like a pop-out. 79, a shallow fly ball to right. A dare going out, but Caligniero calls him off and makes the catch. Nice play by Tony C. It's a fly ball to right. Shallow fly ball. One down. Stevenson will now face McCarver, and Stevenson's very tough on lefties, 203. That's why we kept him in the game. Here's the pitch to Timmy McCarver, and that is a 63. It goes off the McCarver card. McCarver off right-handed pitching needs a 0 through 48, and that's a 37. And that is a double to left. Error check for Yastrzemski, no error. So McCarver is at second base. He doubles. Tying run comes to the plate. And Mike Shannon. Red Sox five outs away from winning a game here finally in the World Series. Five outs away. 10 through 63. He's good for six batters. And we're going to go to the closer now. We're going to go to the closer now. Here comes the closer, John Wyatt. I'm trying to get five outs. He's good for six batters. John Wyatt, who they picked up from De uh, Detroit. Or no, he went to Detroit in 68. I think they picked him up from the Kansas City Athletics. So he played the, in back-to-back -back World Series. I think he was on their World Series roster. And he's a right-handed thrower. And minus three on the hold. He's good for six batters. Control factor 10 through 63. One out. So Stevenson went an inning and a third. He bridged the gap. He's responsible. For McCarver at second. And here comes John Wyatt, the closer. 1967 for the Boston Red Sox. 2.60 earned run average. 10 and 7 with 20 saves. 60 relief appearances. And here's Mike Shannon, the third baseman, who is 0 for 3. Wyatt has a word with Russ Gibson. Gibson back behind the plate. Sets the target. Wyatt rocks and fires to Shannon. That is a 51 off the Wyatt card. Righties need a 0 through 19. That is a 23. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Two down. Wyatt throwing the high cheese that Shannon couldn't get to. I'll bring up Julian Javier. He homered his last time up to tie it. If he homers now, he'll tie it again. Two outs. McCarver's at second. He'll be off on contact. The windup and the pitch to Julian Javier. And White deals a 98. We're going off the Javier card. Javier off a of righty. Zero through 36. And it is a 99. Javier drives this ball deep. I don't think he has much power. Oh, 65. That's not bad. 99. We go to the Bush Stadium stadium chart. 65 at Bush Stadium. 
Needs a 0 through 4. If we get a 0 through 4, it's a 5 5 ball game. Racing back and making the catch. Reggie, oh, 99. Uh, Tony Caligniero at the wall. Javier just missed it. The side is retired on the deep fly out to right. We go to the top of the ninth. Five to three, Boston. And now Joe Horner will come out to keep it a two-run deficit here. With Gibson going tomorrow, they figure they can go to Joe Horner. So here's Joe Horner. He is a left-handed thrower. Plus 10. Doesn't hold runners on well, to say the least. Stamina, 5 batters. His control factor, 10 through 65. John Wyatt faced two batters, so Wyatt's good for four in the bottom of the ninth. All righty. Corner's ready. Here we go, top of the ninth. And he will face... Yastrzemski, Caligniero, and Scott. Yastrzemski is one for four. Last time up, he grounded to first. Here's the pitch to Yaz. And that is a 54. It's on the Horner card. Lefty-lefty matchup. And that's a 99. And that's a deep fly ball. And Yastrzemski's power is a 93. Can Yaz go yard out of Bush Stadium? Bush Stadium cavernous compared to Fenway Park. And what I, his power is 93. And a 93 is the second to last column. Zero through... Bush Stadium. Zero through 14. And Yastrzemski is homered. And he, oh, it's a 51. Didn't matter if it was a 15 anyway. Miss. So that's a deep fly out to right as Maris again makes a wonderful catch. One down. Now bring up Caligniero. He has three hits, all singles. He's been on base every time. Three for three with a walk. He's driven in one and scored two. Horner deals to Caligniero. And that's a double zero range play. And the fielder would be a 38. So it'll be a range play for Julian Javier at second. He's made an error in this series. Javier's range is a 79. And that's a 42 on a 79. Knocks it down, picks it up, and throws to first. Nice play by Javier to keep the ball in the infield. Getting to it quickly and throwing. Caligniero out. That's the first time Tony C has been retired. So two down, and I'll bring up George the Boomer Scott. He singled twice and struck out twice. Scott awaits the Horner offering. Here's the pitch, and that is a 44 off the Horner card, and a 39. That's a ground ball right back at Horner. No, that's a strikeout. Sorry, that is a strikeout. Side retired. So Horner keeps it a two-run deficit. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The Red Sox hoping to get game three. As they're up five to three, their closer, John Wyatt, on the mound. And he will face... He will face... I messed this up. He will face double 
strike out fly out shit I think I gave them an extra out <laughs> last inning Stevenson got the first out McCarver doubled Shannon strikes that's out number two and Javier flies out Maxville struck out, which it shouldn't have mattered because he shouldn't have been up. So he's going to face Maxville, a pinch hitter, and Lou Brock. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Oh, no, no, I, I marked the K in the wrong spot. I should have marked the K up here. That's what I should have done. Okay, no, no, it's Maxville. I did that right. I marked that in the wrong spot. I put it down here. All right, Phew, I didn't mess that up. Well, I did, but I didn't. All right, so here comes Dahl Maxfield, then a pinch hitter in the top of the order, Lou Brock to face John Wyatt. Wyatt deals to Maxville. And that's a 65. And it'll go off the Maxville card. Righty-righty matchup. He needs a 0 through 33. And that's a 93. He is out. One away in the bottom of the ninth. As the 93 is a pop-up to second, we're going to call it. Oh, we have to have an error check. Ah, so we have to actually figure out who it went to. 93. Left field, Yastrzemski. That's even better. Yes. De defensive rating, 94. And he makes the running catch. One away. So he flies out. To Yastrzemski. And now a pinch hitter for Horner. Red Sox two outs away from finally getting a victory here. Man, is this bench bad. Spezio. We're going to go Ed Spezio will pinch hit. So Ed Spezio is going to pinch hit. Here's the pitch to Spezio. And that's a 16 off the Wyatt card. Righty, righty matchup. Spezio needs a 0 through 19. And he gets a 7. So Spezio fights off a tough pitch and he singles to right. No error check on the pitcher's card. Singles to left, excuse me. Tying run comes to the plate. Wow. So Ed Spezio singles. And the tying run comes to the plate now. Hold the phone, folks. <clears throat> and it's Lou Brock. Why it's good for two more batters. Here's the pitch to Brock. And that's a 26. Lefties off of the Wyatt card need a 0 through 23. And that's a 75. Line shot to left. Jastrzemski coming in. He makes the diving catch. Spezio quickly gets back to first. Oh, Jastrzemski robs Brock. So two outs. Wyatt takes a deep breath. He'll now face Kurt Flood. Kurt Flood today, one for four, one for three. He is grounded to the catcher. On a number, single, walked, and grounded out to first. Wyatt picks up the sign from Gibson. He rocks and fires the flood. That is a 67. He'll go off the Kurt Flood card. Righty, righty matchup. Flood, 0 through 45. It's a 61. A 61 is a ground ball. Rico Petroselli. Six on the yellow die. Error check on Rico. 93. Ball game over. Petroselli up with it. He fires to Scott. The Red Sox hold on and win 5-3. to three. The series is now 2-1 to one Cardinals. In an exciting, sloppy game at times on my part. But we're getting better. And I enjoyed it. So that's all that matters.
So five to three as Petroselli throws out Flood. Wyatt gets the save. And the win goes to, I think it goes to Sparky Lyle. Let me go back and check real quick. Lyle gave it up. No, the win, the win goes to, Lyle gave it up. But he's, he pitcher, he's still the pitcher of record. I think Lyle gets the win. The save definitely goes to Stevenson. Well, it's all Red Sox fans saying this one went a little longer than I wanted. Thank you very much. Thank you to Fanomatic ID Gesture, MP Fox. I'm sorry, Itinerary Hobbyist. Um, Johnny B. Crazy, Johnny St. Batiste, the original Grognard, Max Cornelius, Red Sox win, Living My Rhapsody, D. Scott Howard, Red Sox win 5-3 to three and stay alive. Thank you for watching. Health and happiness. Till next time, watch out for the curveball in the dirt. God bless you. You know it's coming, folks. Peace.